good afternoon. I want to welcome all of you here to the Requiem Mass, a Requiem Mass for Father Brian Jones. As many of you uh, knew Father Brian Jones, uh, it's with great affection and great fondness that we say farewell to him today. Today is the day of his funeral and burial, uh, given the current restrictions on um, uh, being close to people. Uh, we're not able to participate in a funeral mass or to be uh, by his graveside. And therefore, we are celebrating this mass together, you at home and me here. Why are we not in the Guardian Angels Church? Why are we here in Stonebridge? Well, uh, I am a member of the, the, the first neo catechumal community of the East End of Guardian Angels, Mile End, and uh, Father Brian Jones is also a member of that community. And um, so, so we, we, uh, we cannot celebrate uh, in my land because I can't be there. And so I invite you to be here with me. Um, Father Brian Jones was uh, diagnosed with the COVID-19 virus and sadly died on Saturday night, the 28th of March, uh, at the age of 75. He'd been 11 years as a priest. He'd been 40 years in his new catechumenal community. And uh, today, it is the Wednesday of Holy Week. And so we commend uh, Father Brian to God the Most High and ask God to have mercy upon his soul and to forgive his sins and to bring him to eternal life. And I'm sure that you will join me with that. I want to welcome all of you who are watching right now. Some of you are watching uh, here in London, others further afield. Uh, many of you are the brothers and sisters of his neocatechumal community in the East End of London. And uh, I, I just want to warmly welcome you here. I am on my own here, uh, but you are with me, here together with all the angels, the guardian angels of every one of you here today representing you. The readings uh, were recorded last night. Uh, we have two members of our new Catholic community. Uh, Simon Haywood is going to be reading for us, and uh, Rino Giordano is our cantor, but they're not here. But by means on, of the wonders of technology, they're going to be with us. Uh, let's keep our rosaries crossed because I only have a, a, a little tiny laptop computer uh, that's <laughs> live streaming this and we've had lots of struggles with technology so I do hope that we continue. If there should be some uh, problems, uh, if we do shut off, I'm sure there won't be any problems, but you'll be able to find this mass later on. So please uh, say hi Mary. So uh, I invite you now to enter uh, into this Mass, this Requiem Mass for Father Brian Jones, uh, dearly beloved brother of ours. We're going to sing our first uh, song uh, from the depths, the De Profundis. From the depths to you I cry O oh Lord, Lord, listen to my voice. Let your ear be attentive to the voice of my prayer. If you remember our sins, Lord, who can be saved? Who can be saved? But there is forgiveness in you, only in you can love be found. But there is forgiveness in you, only in you can love be found. I hope in the Lord, my soul is longing for his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than the watchman for the dawn. Israel is waiting for the Lord, more than the watchmen are waiting for the dawn. 
Because only in the Lord there is love Only in Him forgiveness can be found Because only in the Lord there is love Only in Him forgiveness can be found the Lord saves Israel, the Lord saves Israel from all her sins. The Lord saves Israel, the Lord saves Israel from all her sins. Ay, 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 ay. People are saying that I'm being very quiet. I'm going to try and speak up. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to say our fond farewell to Father Brian and to pray for the repose of his soul, let us call to mind God's mercy in the face of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, and therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to your servant, Brian, for whom today we perform the fraternal office of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, he may come before your face through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So I will hope you'll excuse me having to come backwards and forwards. I'm going to now introduce you to the first reading read by Simon. We understand that all of us are in God's hands, not one of us is lost because God has an infinite love for you and for me. So let's listen now to this first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation but they are in peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out as sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful 
will live with him in love, for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The Word of the Lord. my shepherd there is nothing I shall want there is nothing I shall want the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want fresh and green are the past years where he gives me repose Near restful waters He leads me To revive To revive my duping spirit The Lord is my shepherd There is nothing I shall want nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff With these you give me comfort The Lord is my shepherd There is nothing I shall want There is nothing I shall want You have prepared a banquet before me In the sight of my foes My head you have anointed with oil My cup, my cup is overflowing The Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want There is nothing I shall want Surely goodness and kindness Shall follow me All the days of my life In the Lord's own house Shall I dwell Forever and ever The Lord is my shepherd There is nothing I shall want There is nothing I shall want A reading from the letter to the Romans. Everyone moved by the Spirit is a son of God. The Spirit you received is not the Spirit of slaves bringing fear into your lives again. It is the Spirit of sons, and it makes us cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself and our spirit bear united witness that we are children of God. And if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory as yet unrevealed which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God. But creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, 
from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation, as we know, has been groaning in one great act of giving birth. And not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit, we too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. The Word of the Lord. Now we're going to hear this gospel uh, which calls us to recognize the power of God to raise the dead because each one of us has the destiny to be raised from the dead. The tomb is not our resting place. The tomb is a place in which we sleep in order for the Lord to raise us up. So let us now greet the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On arriving at Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am very uh, humbled to be uh, celebrating this Requiem Mass on behalf of uh, all of you and for Father Brian. We have to remember that we cannot canonize Father Brian. He is on his way to the Father. And if he were to speak to us today, he would say, please don't celebrate my life just yet, but please pray for me. Pray for the forgiveness of my sins. Pray that all the consequences of my sins may be washed away or turned to eternal good. So that's why we're here today. We're here praying for Father Brian that God may have mercy upon him. So as we speak right now, it's 20 past one, uh, the funeral is taking place, so it's almost over. The burial of Father Brian is taking place at the cemetery. Father Brian's body is being laid to rest in the ground as we speak this very moment. But I just want to uh, assure you, it, it struck me during the psalm uh, that uh, Reno was singing today, the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. It struck me that Father Brian is not there. Father Brian is here right now in this Mass. If you could imagine Father Brian he would be here concelebrating, wearing his uh, white vestment with a, 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 a sneaky smile on his face and uh, really um, encouraging us. 
And so for those of you who know Father Brian very well, you know what I'm talking about. So he is not there. He is not in the tomb. Father, Father Brian is with us at this Mass, and he's asking us to remember him, to pray for him. So, as I said before, he was a priest for 11 years. He started in the seminary when he was only 48 years old, a very young 48 years old. And I remember being part of his new catechumal community all those years ago. I remember being very, very surprised that Father Brian should go forward to become uh, a seminarian because he always struck me as somebody who was very um, quiet and somebody who just liked his creature comforts. He was a person who didn't really want to do anything particularly adventurous. But Father Brian led a very adventurous life, but in a very hidden and quiet way, because he made himself available. And that is not an easy thing to do, because to make ourselves available is to say yes to God, to say yes to the divine will of God. And Father Brian could easily have spent the remaining days of his life in his brand new house and uh, just enjoying his community and just going for long rambling walks and just being a very quiet person and looking forward to his retirement. But he made himself available because deep down, fundamentally, he knew that Jesus Christ is King and Lord of life. He knew deep down that Jesus Christ has destroyed death. Because who is it that leaves everything behind to go to a place they don't know? It's only those who trust, only those who have faith and trust in the providential Father. And Father Brian, on this, this neocatechumenal way, a way of rediscovering baptism had planted in him the seed of baptism he knew he knew that he was and is a firstborn son as we, we read in the office of readings today this morning a firstborn son every christian is a favorite son of god a firstborn son and so brian was able to trust that his father in heaven would not disappoint him. And so he risked, and then he put himself forward. He went to the uh, retreat center of Porto San Giorgio there, uh, near, near um, Ancona, near, near uh, Loreto, where the Holy House of Nazareth is. And he made himself available. Kiko, the initiator of the way, asked him if he would be willing to go anywhere in the world. And he said yes. And Kiko asked him, are you disposed to go absolutely anywhere? And he said, yes. In fact, I remember uh, Kiko didn't call him uh, Brian Jones. He called him Fa uh, Brian Ioannis. Brian Ioannis, are you ready, disposed to go anywhere? And he said, yes. I remember him standing there with his headphones on, listening to a translation. Yes. And so his name was put into a bag together with other aspirant young men. And his name was picked out, and the place he was being sent to, India. Father Brian should go to India. And that's, I think, what amazed us all, that he said yes. And he went, and, you know, it wasn't uh, his environment. Father Brian would have liked cockles and eels and mussels, and he would have liked uh, ready break and cornflakes and milk and tea. And there in India, he was eating spicy foods that were outrageously damaging to his stomach. And he had to be given special food just for himself. And yet he put up with it. Father Brian, before he went to the seminary, was a very quiet, insular man. And there in India, his brothers in the seminary, they pulled him out of himself. And Brian came alive. He, Father Brian became a brother to the brothers and the sisters in India. And then he was, as an ordained priest, 11 years ago, he was put on a team of, of um, itinerant catechist missionaries in India, a local team, and there he evangelized. But he couldn't speak the language, and so he was a quiet witness. He would celebrate the Mass, 
in English and translations were, were given for him. And I wonder how many priests would be able to do that, to, to, to go for so many years quietly working and just doing um, what he was being asked to do, being available. He wasn't looking for fame or glory, just simply quietly doing what he was asked to do in a very cheerful way. And then finally he came back to England and uh, as many of you know, he became the priest in charge at uh, in Fitz, Fitzrovia in uh, Ogle Street, St. Charles Borromeo Church there. He looked after the neo-catechumenal communities there and, and uh, for a number of years until finally he retired and he moved to the east end of London, back where he started at the Guardian Angels Church in Mile End, where he was with his neo-catechumenal community. And recently, together, we, we completed the way. We finished the way. And there I discovered something about him which I should have known, that he was passionate, passionate about the Eucharist that for him not to be able to distribute Holy Communion was a great deprivation. And he would do anything to be able to distribute Holy Communion and to celebrate the Mass. Humbly um, plodding along as he did. Heroic, getting up every day, until, uh, right up until he was ill, he was getting up very, very early in the morning to celebrate the, the Office of Readings and Morning Prayer with his brothers and sisters of the near Catholic communities of my land. Faithfully, faithfully, punctually, and preparing his homilies very, very well, doing the, 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 the stuff that we take for granted. And many of the brothers and parishioners said that he was a very humble and merciful confessor. Y you knew when you went to confession with Father Brian, you would receive mercy. Humble man, a quiet man, but, you know, he, he could grumble and he could complain and uh, he could have his moods but he would never, ever hold or bear a grudge. And so we do need to pray for him. I'm sure that Father Brian was as surprised as any of us because he wanted to go on living. 75 years old was too young for him. I'm sure that he was taken by surprise. I'm sure that Brian, Father Brian wanted to go on for many, many more years, just quietly being with his brothers and sisters in the community that he loved so much. But now he is not, he's not on this earth. He is journeying towards the Father. And we need to pray for him. The gospel that we read was the gospel that was proclaimed on the Sunday of his death. The Sunday that he died, the vigil mass, the Saturday night, was the day in which the bishops of this country and all of us rededicated England as a dowry to Mary. A great, a great uh, gift that was given to us that goes back to King Richard II. And Father Brian, being a very, very English priest from London, if it, there was any day he should die, it would be the day of the rededication of England to Mary. Father Brian was one of Mary's priests, Mary's uh, soldiers, as you like, because he was in love with the near Catherine way that was inspired by Our Lady. And so we hold him in our prayers. We, we pray for the repose of his soul. Father Brian and many others who are dying or have died of the coronavirus, I don't think we can say that, that, that it was the will of God for them to, to die. I really don't believe that God wants anybody to die. But rather God wants all of us to experience eternal life. And I know that some of you who are watching this are very afraid. You're very afraid and panicking, perhaps. You're worried about getting the coronavirus. We know that uh, our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has been in the intensive care for two days. We have to pray for him as well. And many, many, many of you are losing loved ones throughout the world. And I just want to reiterate what Jesus Christ is saying. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid because Jesus Christ is Lord of life, and he's destroyed death. And even though we may die, even though our bodies get older and we may experience illness, because the Spirit of God lives in us, that we are adopted as sons and daughters of God the Most High, we do not die. Do not be afraid of dying. Do not be afraid of death, because Christ Jesus is with you. And that's why we can lift up our hearts. We can lift them up to the Lord and to pray to our Heavenly Father and to pray that 
he has prepared a room for us. You know that the final destiny of each one of us, the final resting place, the, the purpose of God for each one of us is not simply to go to heaven, but rather it is to be risen again that the destiny of each one of us is the resurrection of the body and life everlasting as children of God. This is something that Father Brian professed in the creed that he sang, which we're going to profess in a moment. That we will see each other again. That when we rise from the tomb, there will be no more social distancing. There will be no more isolation. But rather, we will be able to be united in the flesh. We'll be able to greet each other, to hug each other in the resurrection of the body. And this is what Father Brian is looking forward to. And so do not forget Father Brian. We pray for him as we remember all those who have died. Many of you at home uh, know who I'm talking about, people that we love. We pray that this coming Passover, which is beginning uh, tomorrow, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, allows us to bring our, all our fears and our worries and bring our death into the resurrection with Christ. We are being called by Christ to pass over from death to life, to pass over from our fears and slaveries, from our sins that hold us bondage in his life, to pass over with Christ to new life. And you will see, if you enter with faith into this Passover Triduum, you will see the resurrection of Christ, even though you may be confined indoors for a few more days. You will see the resurrection. And so let us pass over now. We, 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 we are called not to be afraid. Uh, Father Brian Jones was a priest of the era of St. John Paul II. Father Brian Jones was inspired by St. Paul II, St. John Paul II. And not only did St. John Paul II say, totus tu is everything yours, Mary, but also he would often say, courage, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And so tonight, I do beg your pardon, today, right now, I say to you, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, because Christ is risen. And he is coming to take us with him. So now we're going to profess our faith. For those of you who know the creed, you can sing this at home. So let us sing the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe. Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended into on the third day he rose again he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection 
of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us pray for Father Brian that the Lord may have mercy upon his soul. Let us pray that all Christians throughout the world may be united in the faith that we profess in the creed, that we may all experience the light of God's face after our death, that we may all rise to eternal life. We pray especially for the church in countries that are desperately poor. We pray uh, especially for the church in India from where Brian uh, was ordained. We pray for all our brothers and sisters there who are experiencing such great poverty and hardship at this moment. We pray for all nations that are suffering because of, especially because of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that the Lord may shed his light upon us and give us the light of faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all nations, all leaders, and all the governments of the world. We pray that they may find collaboration with each other something which is easy and grace-filled for the good of humanity. We pray that this time of the pandemic virus may not be a time that is wasted, but rather a time of renewal for the whole world and for governments, that charity may be released to all the hearts of all the nations. We pray for our own nation, England, for its renewal, for the evangelization of all peoples and the evangelization of all the world. We pray especially for uh, those who are our leaders who have to make very difficult decisions that the Lord may inspire them with grace. Let's pray also for uh, our prayer minister for his uh, recovery and, and his new health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all those who are in need. We pray for the poor, for those who are unevangelized. We pray for those who are in desperate at this moment, those who are in darkness. We pray for those who are in depression, for those who mourn and grieve, for those without hope, for those who have come to the end of their tether. We pray that the Lord may sustain them and give them hope. We pray also for those who are panicking and fearful of dying, the Lord may comfort them and give the, them the assurance that they are beloved children and sons and daughters of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for ourselves who are gathered here today to mourn the loss of our brother, Brian. We pray for the repose of his soul. We pray for all priests throughout the world who have selflessly given their lives to serve others, that they may be encouraged and given the grace of renewal. And we pray that the Lord may call many, many other men who are single to the priesthood to give their lives in selfless service of the poor. We pray also for our own neocatechical community and our own communities throughout the world. That the Lord may give us a new heart and a new mind. That we may always know that we are beloved sons and daughters of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a moment, 
in silence i invite you to offer up your own prayers if you're own, if you're own, on your own at home maybe you can uh, pray it loudly or with others to pray in the silence of your heart The Virgin Mary is always watchful, always careful, just as she was given to us through her, her, her son John, the beloved apostle. We pray to her, asking her for her clemency and her mercy and her intervention at this time. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we offer to you all of the prayers that we have offered through our lips and in our hearts. We know that you are a loving Father. You do not leave the dead in the tomb when they turn to you in their need. We pray, Heavenly Father, listen to us and be merciful. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By this mystery of water and wine have become shame, Christ's divinity, is your humble self and share in our humility. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord God, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hand, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Brian, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one Alone he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Brian, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through death gave life to the world, Free me by this from most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commands. Never let me depart you from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep it safe. So in this moment, I invite you to make a spiritual act of Holy Communion. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant, Brian, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and free from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I know that my Redeemer lives, and on that final day of days, his voice shall bid me rise again, unending joy, unceasing praise. This hope I cherish in my heart to stand on earth, my flesh restored, and not a stranger, but a friend. Behold my Savior and my Lord. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Brian in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Brian in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of the, our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Turn to us, O Lord, be merciful and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So I want to thank you all for praying for Father Brian. As I said, let's keep in our, him in our prayers and all those 
who are going through very difficult times at this moment. And we keep in prayer uh, our neo catechumal communities um, and for the work of evangelization that they are, are doing. And uh, I wish you all a very blessed and uh, holy triduum that the Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen, may shine upon all of you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take me to heaven Take me to heaven Oh, oh, oh Lord Call me to die Call me to die I seek of you, only this I ask of you, never to doubt your love, never to doubt your love, to be with you, to be with you. Better by far